this chapter, I will be showing you how to remove the cabinet of a Whirlpool built top load washing machine. Most repairs require the removal of the cabinet to access internal components. First look for two Phillips head screws. On some models they will be located on the front left and right of the control console. On many Kenmore brand washers, they will be covered by a cap that can be removed simply by pulling the top of the cap towards the front of the washer. If you don't see them here, you want to look to the rear of the console. The screws pass through the end of the cap and attach the control panel to the cabinet top. The very end of these screws are not threaded, so it's helpful to insert your finger just under the head of the screw and lift them out the last eighth of an inch. If no screws can be seen, move the tub to the side and feel for a clip. This clip needs to be pushed towards the rear of the console to release it from the cabinet top. On the left side, the mounting clip is located next to this new hinge activated lid switch. So be sure that you don't put pressure on the switch. It's constructed of plastic, so if you accidentally press on it, it will break very easily. After you have your screws removed or your clip released, pull the control panel slightly forward and allow it to tip back. There are large tabs on the base of the side cap that hook into the cabinet top and a hinge system that will allow the console to hang in place. Next you need to unplug the lid switch. This is a newer style lid switch that engages by the lid hinge. On some models, as shown here, the lid has a plunger on it that will trip the switch through a hole in the cabinet top. This style will have a plug at the center rear of the cabinet top. Now we need to remove the cabinet mounting clips. These clips attach the cabinet to the rear panel of the frame. To remove them, insert your screwdriver into the front of the clip and use leverage by pushing the top of the screwdriver towards the rear of the machine. Now that your lid switch is disconnected and we've removed our mounting clips, grab hold of the front of the cabinet by opening the lid and tilt the cabinet away from the back panel. The bottom of the cabinet is hooked under the frame, so you want to pull it forward just slightly. Now you'll be better able to access and see the internal workings of your washer and better diagnose the problem that you're experiencing. Now let's look at how to reinstall the cabinet. The front of the cabinet slides under the front of the frame of the washer. There's a small step down to the side frame so that the side cabinet can set on top of these pins. There are four pins on the frame, two on the front and two in the rear. Slide the front of the cabinet under the frame completely. It helps to give it a little kick to be sure that it's all the way under the frame in the front. Tip the cabinet back. You may need to squeeze the back sides of the cabinet inward to ensure that the rear frame pins insert into the rear of the cabinet holes. It's also very important that the small hose that attaches the pressure switch is not being kinked by the cabinet or you may get an overflowing washing machine. Reattach your cabinet clips by inserting them into the back panel of the washer and pushing them down with the palm of your hand. Be sure to remember that you plug in your lid switch or your washer will not work properly. If you have this clip style, just press down until you hear the clip snap into place. Tip the console back into place, and if you've removed any screws, at this point be sure that the console is slid as far back as it can go so that the holes line up. And congratulations, you're done.